Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm going to give you some pairings and some amazing talent pages to run in Roots of War for your first time. And obviously we've not tried it out but it opens up as you can see in 12 hours so it's going to come very soon. So these are going to be some of the pairings and talents that I'm going to be running in here. So I hope you guys check them out and try them out yourselves and tell me what your results are. So with all that said, let's get into today's video. Hello everyone, so yes, we're gonna be going over some heroes and the talents for it because in Roots of War, if you didn't know, you have the battle sync option and if you go into the Roots of War up menu by just clicking, if you come out, your double swords, which is the campaign area, you got a nice little bit of UI, you can hit the Roots of War, you can check out the rules if you wanna check out the rules, we've done a full video guide on that, comment should be a pinned above somewhere, but the battle sync feature, the battle sync feature basically it means all heroes that you own will be level six there. So you will always be at max capacity like everyone else. The only thing that matters in this is your star investments that you've invested into as well as your skills, as you can imagine, right? So that's where everyone is gonna be at, depending on what you've invested in and what you've got unlocked is what you're gonna be using. So let's go some, through some pairings. We're gonna go through some easy, quick pairings that we can imagine. I'm gonna work from a spender or low spender view first. Then we're going to show some free-to-play options, right? Because we, you know this channel is all about free-to-play players too. We try and cater to both of you as much as we can. So, first, straight away, Lilia Valen. Definitely one match you're going to always bring. You're going to try and bring almost the best of the best matches here, if you can, to the battlefield. So, Lilia Valen must bring if you've got it. If you don't have Lilia then, what you would be bringing is like Valen and your Wild Deer, right? So Valen and Wild Deer would be the primary setup for you. And the cool thing is if you have a Awakened, and this is gonna be a spicy one, but if you have an Awakened Wild Deer as well as an Awakened Valen, if you got both Ice Boys fully kitted out, you're gonna want Wild Deer primary, and I'm gonna explain why. And the reason is, when you have him prime rate, when you have the awakened state of this match, you're gonna be able to freeze targets, which is very, very important, honestly. This is a super important mechanic, because when we go to Valen and you have that big boy also awakened, whenever he goes to cast that skill one, and if that target's already frozen, meaning they've already got freeze applied to them, he immediately deals 400 damage and then he will then fling another 1200 damage, freezing them again, right? He can also freeze the targets with his own skills here, which is in Icy Interdiction. This could be a random chance, but you can always, always guarantee it with the Wild Ear. And the cool thing with Wild Ear is when we go and showcase the talent pages, You've got a few to rock from, and I actually really, really like this page for him, right? It's not going down the skill tree yet, but we're gonna showcase the skill tree variant. But this is a magic tree, and if you're gonna run the magic tree, what this does is, with your march, it enhances, basically, the tanking capability with Wild Ear. He has a shield, which is really good. He has some good stats for HP. He obviously reduces their attack, which is really, really good. So he's a really good utility, and as you guys know, he's there to basically enhance that uh, Valen. So what we can do is, on top of that, we can Magic Maelstrom, right? So if we Magic Maelstrom them, they're gonna shred even further on their Magic Defense. So then our Valen 400 plus the 1200 after is gonna hit even harder, plus the Waldea hits even harder on this. We also get Wither, which does the exact same effect. And throughout the fight, we're gonna be firing Hypercosms. We're gonna be doing as much damage as we can. And because we didn't take this elemental boost, with Waldea, which you can do, which you can't do with Lilia, and this is kind of the advantage of Waldea in my eyes, is the PvP tree. So in the PvP tree, we go down the attack march speed to get that big boy march speed, but look at the draw. Honestly, reducing all damage you take by a maximum of three seconds, and this lasts for 20 seconds, is great. It keeps you alive, and the fact that you have march speed in this 
makes your mages be able to reposition and stay in the fight. You guys might think, oh, I can just fight, resource heal and bring more troops back. Yes, you can. But guys, that's a refresh timer. And if your troops have lost the battlefield, well, the other team have just got the lifestone. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You want to try and sustain and beat your opponents as long as you can, right? Sustained fighting is going to be a big thing in this, I can imagine. So march speed is going to be important. It's going to allow you, obviously, to get back and refresh quicker and get back into the battlefield. But when you're fighting, it's going to allow you to reposition because mages are slow as hell. Everyone knows mages are slow as hell. And the fact that we've got all a 12% march speed already from just this is beautiful. So you can get in and out of combat nicely. It's going to benefit you in Roots of War. But you can do the same thing. And this is more of an all-in approach. So if you're going to go for an all-in approach with the Wild Ear and Valen, do this. It's the exact same. It's the skill tree base. So instead, you've got all the insane rage generation and skill crit rate, which is a really good thing that synergizes with the skill crit that Valen has. And then you also have the um, extra damage dealt, right? So you, you're going all damage, basically. This is pure damage, trying to kill them instead of being more of a utility-based burst mage, right? This does damage, don't get me wrong, but it's more utility that you provide, while this is more damage. This is pure damage, so, you know, if we switch up, we'll play it, we'll use this one, pure damage for the build, right? So that's for your mages. When you've got archers now, again, if you're in season one, you won't have access to Fragar. So what you would be running is your Nico Gwen and uh, Nico and Kanara. This is going to be an amazing combo to run. If you don't have Kanara though, you will run Nico and Craig. Uh, if you, this is going to be the combo. I'm sorry, guys. You need to run this combo. People might consider using Guan Win. Sure, you can use Guan Win, but Craig is going to be the one that is the all-star here because of the AoE. You're going to be physical defense shredding these guys with your Nico. And because you're physical defense shredding them with the Nico, you're going to be able to use that amazing bleed to do a ton of AoE for your Roots of War team. And again, open field AoE, this is very important. So you can imagine that is there. But, but... If you're in Stars Reignited, you're going to have access to Fregar. <laughs> so, what you can do is run Nico, Kanara, and Fregar, Craig. This would be a really good combo that you can run. And this would be a really, really powerful combo for your Maxman, right? And you can easily run any of these. And when you do this, what I would do is with your Nico talent page... I would just run this single page. Honestly, guys, I think this is the page you I would always run. It does the most amount of damage that you can deal generally to a person. It has a ton of counterattack damage built in too, which is really good because then you can have the counterattack damage stack with your skill four and of obviously with the Kanara skill four that has it. So it's a really good match to rock out there. Um, so definitely would recommend running this if you want. You know I, I am a massive archer player, so that's why I'm probably not going to go too crazy in the talent page section on those guys because you know we've got all the guides for them. But we also have some other options, right? So you can also run, even though we haven't gone over it, is Alloin. If you also have Alloin and Lilia, this might be a fine option. You can run Lilia, Alloin with Celestials just for the Mage March, and then Valen, Waldir as a second Mage March if you have access to it. And this is going to be basically a Lilia that has um, the ability to run Insult to Injury. So this is the only time you're going to do this page. Honestly, if you're going to run this page... You're going to run Lilia and Alloin, and the reason why, Alloin does a ton of continuous damage, and so does Lilia. So you're going to be able to abuse the 5% extra damage effects here. You're still going to abuse the HP increase in combat in this build. You're also going to go for the Magic Shred and the Rage Generation, right? So... Really good build for the Lilia. She needs this HP boost because she doesn't have any sort of shielding like the Waldir March does, like 
than like he can take the Ecoclasm for. That hopefully makes a little bit of sense for you guys. But you can run that exact same build for Alloin. So if you wanted to run that same build on Alloin, you could. And you could run something like Alloin and Atheist as a march, and that would be a really fine addition. But we also have flying units. So again, I would recommend if you've got a uh, Fear, I would run Fear as the primary hero with celestial units. And then you've got Atheist, and that will then give you your talent page for Fear, which is the one on screen, which is a very, very scary one indeed. So the way this one works out is it is better, I will say this now, this talent tree works better if you have an Atheist Awakened. If you have an Atheist Awakened, so he has all of his skills level 5, it means in the battlefield you're going to have that extra healing that you have from his passive. And the reason why that's good is whenever you get a shield or heal, you're going to start generating rage. And the fact that we heal from killing people and the fact that we get healing from our Atheist, we get a shield from our um, fear, we're going to be generating a ton of rage. So I really, really like that little combination we have there. And we also take down here shrink to increase our defense. So the way this build works is basically fear is the front line. She's going to make you super tanky with the amount of healing she has here. But because of that, she's going to be dealing damage for you. And the Atheist in the back is who's going to be firing off massive skill shots and trying to take advantage of that 15% hero skill damage bonus, right? So really good talent and pairing to use again for your Route to War team. And then finally, what you can imagine, the melee heroes, we're going to be running stuff like Madeline and Nika, really good frontline units. You can also run Bakshi Emery's. You can also run something like Bakshi and Indus if you really wanted to. And this is going to be something that some people might run. And the reason why you would run this is for that 20% damage buff. Guys, in the front line, if you can break the enemy's front line quicker by applying this buff and your you know, team takes advantage of this, this will take, you know, turn the tides of battle. So very interesting to see what people come out with. And a final match I'm going to talk about before we break it up and finish up the video for this is going to be Indus herself. So I'm going to test one match in this and see how effective it is and if it's really good. I don't know if it's going to be good, but we are going to test it. We're going to run Indus. And this is going to sound crazy. But we are, everyone always theory crafts the Indus and the Pan March. And I have both heroes at a really good state. Obviously Pan's awakened and you need her awakened so you get this extra healing on yourself for the talent page to work. As well as the buff itself is really, really powerful for your front line. So we're going to run a Mage March, which is going to be an Indus and Pan March, which is going to be a crazy support march. And the reason why you can run this is, again, you can go down the support tree and run this style of tree, which basically means you're healing a ton. And the more you heal yourself and the more you heal in general, you're going to generate rage. And whenever you generate rage, you're going to fire off the skills, you're going to heal more, and it should just keep you up. So that's the premise of this build. It's going to allow you to basically heal a ton. And by healing a ton, it's going to allow you to heal your allies, put the debuff down, and hopefully be a support march in the game. Which is going to be a unique thing if you're able to do that. And the reason we go down here, again, whenever you gain a buff effect, we gain rage. Whenever we get hit, we gain rage. Uh, we get troop capacity, so all of our heals are even bigger. And honestly, a really cool tree. Recommend using it. If you're going to use this, this is a spicy build for Roots of War, right? So those are some of the pairings, some of the talents that you can see in this video. I'm going to go over four Roots of War that you can be using and try out right because all heroes will be level 60 you can use the battle sync use any of those different talent pages and get an advantage on it right so really really cool 
If you're wondering what artifacts to run, I would honestly run your strongest ones. So I'm going to be running stuff like Shadow Blades, uh, Phoenix Eye, Viola's Bow, Spring Blades. I'm also going to be running stuff like Dragon Scale Armor and the Warhammer. I'm going to test out which ones feel better. I'm also, because I'm using that support march, my Indus will be using the Tier of Arbon. So we're going to try and get some more AoE healing and try and do as much as we can for our team, right? So really cool little bit of synergy there. If you are obviously being a garrison lead and you're going to be using Madeline and Nika as your garrison, you're going to be needing Breath of the Forest. And obviously, if you're the rally leader, you're going to need the Wolfbane War Banner as the alternative. Those are most needed artifacts. But everything else, honestly, guys, test it out. This is the game mode to test it out, have fun, as well as to obviously try and win for your alliance. And I hope you've enjoyed today's video. You know, it's nothing where it's loads of separate videos. Nice, simple, one video. Here's some marches. Here's some talent pages that I'm going to be running and that you guys could be running for your troops. And obviously, I've showcased the free-to-play stuff as well as the whales stuff. Basically, those are what you're going to be running on your marches. And I hope you've enjoyed it. You know, a nice casual video, nothing too crazy. I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to try and obviously record our Roots of War when it happens on Thursday. But if you guys do have any ability to record, and I mean this, if you can record Fire X Recorder on Android, or if you got like a PC client, you could use Streamlabs OBS to record just the gameplay side. And if you can record that gameplay, you know, send me a little DM on Discord and we'll be able to have a talk and try and make some really good Roots of War PvP esports commentary videos that I know you guys would enjoy. So let's see if we can work together and get this pumping in the ironworks, right? So that's going to be it today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And with all that said, smash like, comment and subscribe to today's channel. And if you don't, you're gonna miss out. I always go live streams on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if we have any surprise streams like we will be doing this week, like on Thursday, you'll know because the notification bell will pop up. So always, always if smash that subscribe and like and hit the notification bell so you know. And tell me in the, uh, in the comment below what you think to today's video. And with all that said, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out, everyone.